Hi students, welcome to lesson number 23, Theories of City Growth and here we are going to discuss about Hoyt Sector Theory and Multiple Nuclear Theory. The Brief Introduction In every advanced society, city are at the center and act as the heart of economic, social and political activities in that area. They are of different shapes and have different functions and the geography impacts the daily lives of the people who live in the city and surrounding areas. All cities provide their residents a variety of services and functions such as shopping, manufacturing, transportation, education, medical and protective services. Cities evolved over time and if a city had positive factors such as agriculture, access to water, trade, defense, its population increased. The increase in urban population result in rapid expansion of the city and greater urbanization of the society. After the end of World War II, North America experienced rapid urbanization and there was need for housing outside of the co-urban areas due to growing population and demand. The result was the suburbanization of our society. Suburbanization is the movement of people from core urban areas to the outskirts. Now the brief objectives. This unit try to explain the ecological approach in studying the city landscapes, urban ecological patterns in differentiation of residential and the workplace that is business and industry. Here we will understand the theories of city growth and the ecological segregation in residential patterns. Now, what is model of urban land use? In the early 1900s, researchers wanted to find out how cities worked. They developed a variety of urban land use models to help describe and explain different types of cities and their neighborhoods that made up the city. All the models used to explain urban land use have at the center central prisoners district. The CDB is found at the heart of every older city and is the area of skyscrapers, business headquarters and banks. Spreading out from this intensive economic land use area is a fringe of wholesale and retail businesses where houses, transportation terminals and light industry. The residential area extends outward beyond this ring of activity. Several of these models try to depict the use of this urban area spatially. It makes sense that students at the University of Chicago developed many of these land use models because Chicago was a city that saw rapid growth. In the 18th century, one of these Chicagoan scholars and economist Homer Hoyt, who in 1939 developed the Hoyt sector model. Hoyt sector model is the model of urban land use. Homer Hoyt gave sector model which is also known as Hoyt model in 1939 which explains how cities grew. As we witnesses the population growth it is becoming more and more essential to understand how cities work. Studies on patterns of urban growth, settlement, geography and land use are of great interest to the concerned people. Various theories and models have been proposed which attempts to explain how the growth took place and how different groups and activities are arranged in an urban area. Hoyt's model is somewhat similar to Burgess model and is often considered as an improved version. He argued that cities do not develop in the form of simple rings, instead they have sectors. He recommended that few activities grow in the form of sectors which radiates out along the main travel links. Activities in a sector are the same throughout the sector because of the purpose of the function it serves. Hoyt's study indicated that contrary to the concentric zone theory, patterns of land use do not change according to distance from the CBD. Instead, 
land is more strongly affected by major transportation routes and the real property prices in the form of rents. Land use within each sector would remain the same because like attracts like. The high class sector would stay high class because it would be the most sought after area to live. So, only the rich could afford to live there. The industrial sector would remain industrial as the area would have a typical advantage of a railway line or river. These sectors can be housing, industrial activities etc. These sectors grow along railway lines, highways or rivers. In recent decades, there have been a tendency for factories to locate an outer belt lines near the edge of the city. Hoyt linked the pattern of the American city to an octopus with tentacles extending in various directions along the transportation lines and high end residential areas which tend to be located along these established transportation routes. Now we will understand the sectors of Hoyt model. The first one it is the central business district. As with all classic models of urban land use, the Hoyt sector model has at its core the central business district. Every older city has one such district at its center. Typically, it is the area with the high rise buildings, banks and large business headquarters. It is a commercial and business center of a city. In bigger cities, the CBD is often referred to as a financial district. The second one, it is the industrial sector. Industries are represented in the form of a sector radiating out from the center. This forms sector because of the presence of a transport linkage along which the activities grew. Presence of railway line, river or road would attract similar activity and thus a continuous corridor or sector will develop. Apart from the industries, some areas also serve as a residential area for lower class workers. Living conditions are bad because of closeness to industries. In Chicago, several of these industrial corridors stretched outward from the CBD along railroad lines and the Illuminations Michigan Industrial Canal. Now we will understand the residential sector. Hoyt's model suggests that people will live in different sectors based on income levels. Since desirable land that is near lakes, hills, places away from the smells of the factories was more expensive, the elite class neighborhoods were built in zones separated from lower working class zones. Now the low class residential, low income groups reside in this area, narrow roads, high population density, small houses with poor ventilation exist in this area. Roads are narrow and often connect to the industries where most of the people in this sector work. The closeness to industries reduces the travel cost and thus attracts industrial workers. Environmental and living conditions are often inadequate because of the proximity to factories. So those who live in these sectors do so to reduce the cost to commute to work. They are sometimes stereotyped as living on the other side of the tracks and may experience discrimination. The other one is the middle class residential. This residential area is a bit more desirable because it is located further from industry and pollution. The activities of people residing in this area consist of different activities and not just the industrial work. It has more linkages with CBD along with some linkages to industries. This area has the most significant residential area. People who work in the central business district have access to good transportation lines making their commute easier. The middle class sector is the largest residential area. The next sector is the high class residential. Hoyt's model also identified an elite zone for the handful of upper class people who live in the city. This is the outermost and the farthest area from the downtown. Michigan Avenue was that elite district in Chicago, wealthy and affluent people live in this area. High class residential sectors tend to be quiet, clean and have less traffic than the other zones. 
there is also a corridor that extends from the central business district to edge of the city where the prime real estate is found. In many cities, you will find the high class district on the west side where prevailing winds enter the city and are upwind from industrial zones which are dirty and smelly. It is unlikely that high class residential housing would be found near factories or lower class housing areas. In this way, Hoyt's model suggests a distant physical separation between the wealthy and the poor. Now, what are the limitations of sector model? Hoyt's model is based on outdated rail transportation and does not consider the existence of personal cars that lets people commute from low cost land outside the city boundaries. The model also does not consider the new concepts of edge cities. Edge cities are urban complexes consisting of a large node of office buildings with more workers than residents. The CBD has lost some of its importance since it was created as many retail and office buildings have moved into the suburbs. If you look at older cities, they tend to follow the Hoyt segment model whereas newer cities follow Burgess concentric zone model. Only railway lines are considered for the growth of sectors and do not make allowances for private cars. It is a monocentric representation of cities. Multiple business centers are not accounted in this model. Physical features may restrict or direct growth along specific wages. So, no reference to out of town development was given. Now, we will understand the multiple nuclear model of city growth. Multiple nuclear model was developed by C. D. Harris and Edward L. Ullman in 1945. The model is based on the theory that cities have multiple growth points or nuclei around which growth take place. The model was presented in an article called The Nature of Cities by them. It is one the widely accepted model applicable to modern cities. The basic assumption of this theory is that cities are not homocentric but they rather have many mini centers which play a significant role in the development of a city. These mini centers originally developed independently with the specialized advantages that they offer or similar activities clustering in these areas. Multiple nuclear theory differs from the earlier theories like sector theory and concentric zone theory. It believes that city has not developed around a single center or CBD, but it has a group of many mini centers. However, the phases of development may be simultaneous or in different periods. Now, what are the need for multiple nuclear model? Multiple nuclear model is based on the structure of Chicago city just like the Burgess model or concentric zone model of 1925. This model is an attempt to explain the structure of the city reflecting the complexity and growth over time. It is argued that a city might start with a single central business district that is CBD, but over a period the activity scatter and gets modified. This theory is based on the notion that the cities have an essentially cellular structure in which the scattered activities attract people from surrounding areas and act as smaller nuclei. These smaller nuclei gain importance and grow and start influencing the growth of activities around them. This model provides a more realistic explanation of the cities. The theory was found based on the idea that people have greater movement due to increased car ownership. This increased movement allows for the specialization of, of regional centers, example heavy industries, business park and retail areas, etc. The model is more suitable for the cities which are big and expanding. The number of nuclei around which the city expands depends upon the situational as well as historical factors. The model was developed due to certain things that is the first one 
central industrial activities require transportation facilities, example railway stations, ports, etc., to lower transportation cost. Second, certain activities tend to stay apart, example residential zoning and airports, etc. Third, certain activities are formed together to their mutual advantage, example university, bookstore, coffee shops, etc. However, the phases of development may be simultaneous or in different periods. The multiple nuclear type is further divided into central business wholesale or light manufacturing, low income residential, medium income residential, high income residential, heavy industry, outlying businesses, residential suburb, industrial suburb. While these various parts of city are clear when analysis of the social organization of the city is made. It has developed through a natural process rather than a planned process. Now, what are the assumption of multiple nuclear model? First one, the land is not flat. It is difficult to find flat land for big cities and the terrain features affect the activities, development and direction of growth of an urban area. Second, even distribution of resources. No one enjoys privileges or have exclusive access to resources as resources are evenly distributed within the city. Third, even distribution of people in residential areas. People are distributed homogeneously and not concentrated in a particular area or pocket. This is essential as an unevenly distributed population as a direct impact on markets. Fourth, it is even transportation cost. Transportation cost is even in the city and not influenced by location. Fifth, it is profit maximization. A specific activity will locate itself where maximum profit can be earned. For this, it requires different combination of rent, transportation cost, labor cost, proximity to market may be tried and the combination which is the best result which gives the final location for the activity. This location also considers the restrictions over the activity and the need to be separated from other non-compatible activities such as locating residential areas away from the industrial, locating large industries with more accessibility to reduce transportation costs and to ease the movement of goods. Now we will understand the limitations and criticism of the multiple nuclei model. This model also had its limitations and could not be applied to many cities and did not entirely explain the structure of urban areas, but it was considered much better than other models that explain the structure of urban areas. Another limitation is the limited activities which are considered in the model along with the very rigid and specific boundaries of the activities. Other disadvantages of this model include the first one, there is negligence in the height of buildings. Second, there is on existence of abrupt divisions between zones. Third, each zone displays a significant degree of internal heterogeneity and not homogeneity. Fourth, not aware of inactive forces. Fifth, no consideration of the influence of physical relief and government policy. Sixth, the model is not applicable to Asian cities with different cultural, economic and political backgrounds. To summarize, the urban land use and city system had been discussed under Hoyt sector model. It also explains multiple nuclear model which is a suitable model for cities which are growing and expanding. It also the spatial characteristics of cities and is found that no single theoretical model fits all cities. There is wide diversity of types of cities and of the ecological characteristics they manifest. <music>